three, two, one. Hey, Shagheads, Curtis Tucker here, AKA Shags, with another episode of a Shaggy Duck Live podcast. It has been a while, I apologize, but I do have some excuses for you guys. Uh, last episode was all about the uh, Banana Seat Squad, so it's been a while, but uh, this is gonna be a true uh, kind of a journal update, giving you guys uh, some background and what's going on behind the scenes of Shaggy Duck Studio and what I've been up to. So follow along as I work from home here in the Great Plains in the area of Enid, Oklahoma, and I've uh, been doing this entrepreneurial thing since about 2003, and I got a lot of projects in the works, uh, a lot of podcasts, blogs, and things like that. So appreciate you guys being here. You guys can hit me up at Shags at shaggyduck.com. Uh, we appreciate you guys emailing me there. I've got a Patreon account at patreon.com slash shags, and that, that's both of those are shags with two Gs, shags. So anyway, you guys can check that out there. I would love to hear from you guys. If you guys have a podcast or something going on, a blog or a YouTube channel, uh, let me know. And also don't forget, uh, you if you're listening to this podcast on your favorite podcasting app. You can uh, watch it on YouTube at youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV. And tonight I am joined by my uh, mascot, my right-hand man, Mr. Graham. Hang on one sec, I'm gonna see if I can. Uh, so if you're listening, uh, head on over to YouTube and you can see him on video. I'm gonna lift him up here for the video. So hang on one sec. Come here, buddy. Hey, everybody wants to see you. There he is. So here's my buddy. Hi, buddy. Can you say hello? Oh, he did say hello. Okay, I hope he is sniffing the microphone. So hope you guys uh, check him out on YouTube. So hey, tell everybody bye-bye. I'm going to put you down, and we're going to see if he will take a nap while I do the episode. So okay, buddy. Okay, so fun stuff here at Shaggy Duck Studio. Man, I tell you what, uh, living here in Oklahoma, if you guys have not seen the news or are completely unaware of what's going on in our part of the country, uh, it's been a uh, pretty big heat wave here, and we've been reaching temperatures probably 103 to 112 in about the last, uh, oh, probably two weeks or, or a little longer. Uh, very little if uh, no rain. I, I think we did get uh, a little bit of rain, just like a 30 minute downpour the other night. And I think we've got rain expected this next weekend, but boy, it, uh, it has been dry. They say it's one of the uh, worst uh, heat waves uh, since the Dust Bowl days back in the 1930s here in Oklahoma, and of course, uh, a lot of things have changed, agriculture and the way we planted things. So uh, no more Dust Bowl days in Oklahoma, but uh, the temperatures are way up there and uh, it has been hot. So uh, we uh, hopefully that will cool off this weekend and we can get back to, uh, and, and I don't mind though. Um, I am a summer guy. Uh, I have been hitting the trail a couple of times when it was, uh, I think I went yesterday and it was 106 and uh, went about four miles and then came back. So um, sometimes not real safe, but uh, if you go out really hydrated and uh, you kind of, you know, you know, uh, what do I want to say? You uh, know what your body's doing. I mean, you're aware of what's going on. Um, you should be fine. But uh, if you don't go out in the heat a lot, then uh, it could be a little bit bad for you. If you're watching, uh, on the YouTube channel. Hello, waving at you. I am in the Shaggy Duck studio and you'll notice that it's kind of a different view because what I've done is I've moved the mixer over uh, into kind of a podcasting area and it's set up for two or three people uh, to do a podcast together and instead of me doing it right there in front of my uh, desk or art table. Uh, I'm doing it over here in the podcasting area. So basically the majority of my office is now in the background. So you guys can check that out and see that there. And uh, hopefully the sound quality on the audio uh, podcast is good because I am using the new Rodecaster Pro 2. Uh, this is the second episode that I have used that. 
and it is very cool. It's running off of a USB battery at this very moment. I'm really enjoying that. And I've got my new Rode podcasting microphone, so I'm using that. And then I just got, have my lapel mic for the video or the audio on the YouTube video. So I hope that's coming through loud and clear, and that may be a little far away, but uh, I can jack up the price on that or the. Uh, volume on that. Uh, boy, I'm just bleh, I'm trying to stay concentrated here. So anyway, so okay, so it has been uh, probably at least two weeks, maybe week and a half, two weeks since I have uh, uploaded a new episode of A Shaggy Duck Life. And part of that is uh, just things got busy. I didn't have like a uh, top of the mind uh, episode to do. But uh, the week, uh, so, so then we ran into a week there where Todd, my podcasting partner on the other two podcasts, so you can uh, hear us on uh, the 70s Buzz podcast and Buzzhead Radio podcast. He was on vacation, so we had to cram some episodes in, and then uh, that just kind of messed up one week, and then, the, uh, then he got back, uh, we were playing catch-up, and then... I had lunch with uh, another one of my friends here in town, and he had mentioned that the local uh, technology center was having a night, a three night night class for getting your drone pilot's license. And uh, so, if you guys have been listening or you know listened to some of the older episodes, you know that that was one of the things on my to-do list for this year was to get my drone pilot's license, and I did buy a DJI uh, Mini 2 drone over a year ago, and it is sitting here in my office, in the box, in the wrapper, and uh, over a year have not gotten it out of the box, which uh, turns out probably was a pretty good thing because the DJI uh, Pro 3 is out with a lot of uh, improvements, especially on camera and video. And stuff. So I have a feeling I will end up selling my uh, Mini 2 and buy the Pro 3. So if anybody out there uh, wants a deal on a DJI uh, Mini 2 that is still in the box, literally with the plastic on it, uh, hit me up and I'll see what kind of a great deal I can make you. And uh, so uh, so I kind of looking over what it was going to take to get a drone pilot's license. Um, I knew it wasn't gonna be super easy, and so I'd been considering some classes or watching a lot of videos, and of course, I just don't have a lot of time to watch a lot of videos, so this seemed like it might be a good deal. It was three, three hour, so nine hours, three three hour classes, a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night classes, and basically, though, all it did was kind of prepared you for the test, uh, but not like completely. You still, you know, I still feel like I need to do a lot of studying. So, um, so I'm not setting out to become a commercial drone pilot, but uh, according to all the rules, I can't take any drone footage or pictures and use them on a commercial website or in a commercial way without having my pilot license. And so uh, you can you can take, uh, you know, if you've got a, a drone that weighs less than the 0.55 and you use it only for recreation, there aren't a whole lot of rules that you have to follow. Now there are some, but uh, it makes it really easy. But you basically can't use the pictures or the video for anything. And and I'm not wanting to use my pictures and video necessarily to make money with them, but they would be posted on Enid Buzz and CurtisTucker.com and uh, Shaggy Duck and stuff like that, which those do make money and off of advertising, things like that. So there's kind of that weird gray area where, you know, I might have been able to get away with it in certain um circumstances, but uh, looking for my dog to see what he's up to. Uh, but I didn't want to take a chance, so I thought, okay, I'm not going to get out of the box until I get my drone pilot's license. Okay, so uh, so uh, I've done nine hours, 
And uh, let me tell you, so basically, if you are slightly interested, now, the one thing about getting your drone pilot's license is uh, there are popping up a lot more drone jobs coming up. And so if you do have your pilot's license, uh, it actually could turn into a pretty lucrative or a full-time business. Um, you know, things like here in Oklahoma, we've got a lot of the wind turbines and so you know somehow people need to go up and check you know for fractures or, or just different things on those well you can fly a drone and go you know wind turbine to wind turbine and, and check out everything and not necessarily have to have a guy climb up there and check every one of them uh, there's you know real estate you know, especially in Oklahoma if you're you know needing footage of uh, some acreages or a farm or something you can you can grab that footage for the real estate company so there's a lot of uh, a lot of ways that you could probably make money now again that's not why i wanted to do it i basically um you know in the mornings i get out in into the open area and i take uh, sunrise great sunrise pictures but there are times when i know the sun's coming up or going down and i might be more in town and there's trees and there's houses in the way and i can tell by i can just tell by the look that, that it's going to be a really great sunrise or sunset well if i i i, I want to be able to pop my drone up in the middle of my neighborhood and grab some of those sunrises and sunsets and then i want to be able to go downtown and you know, take some uh, drone footage of buildings and events, um, you know. And so so I decided it, it was probably going to be smart to go ahead and get my drone pilot's license. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a little bit of insight real quick. I'm not going to go really deep into this. I got like about a bazillion different uh, subjects to try to talk about this evening. But so um, to get your drone pilot's license has almost zero to do with flying a drone. You, They don't teach you how to fly a drone. They don't care if you have a drone. You don't have to have a drone. Uh, it, they don't teach you anything about the controls on a drone. They don't teach you about you know, how to land a drone. It's nothing, nothing to do with flying a drone. drone. It's all about being a um, airplane pilot. And so basically what they want you to know is everything that a pilot knows other than flying the plane. So when a pilot, you know, is taking off, he's got to know the wind and the clouds and link of, you know, uh, the area around him, how high he's got to go to take off, how low he's got to go to land, uh, weather conditions, the size of the airport, the air traffic around him, um, you know, where he, where he can fly, where he can't fly. And so basically all of those rules and all of that knowledge in those uh, maps that the pilots have to know, uh, drone pilots also have to know. So basically you're almost, get, you know, getting halfway to your pilot's license other than learning the controls of the plane and actually flying. So uh, there's a lot of uh, terminology that you're going to have to learn. There's a lot of law, I want to say laws, but uh, basically, um, you know, if it, you have to know the weight of your drone and if it's under a certain weight, there's a whole set of uh, easy rules as opposed to if it's over, but if you're flying within four or five miles of an airport then there's a whole another set of rules and you have to get approval and if it's above a certain altitude in certain areas not only do you have to get approval but you have to get and fill out a waiver and try to get a waiver approved and so um and and you've got to know where you're at to be able to tell you which of those things that you need to have and so yeah, there's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, legality, you know, where am I at? Um, how close am I to an airport? You know, do I need to just uh, file a flight? And you have to file flight plans and you have to inspect your drone and you have to document everything. And if you fly over people, so if you don't fly over people, it's not as complicated. But when you decide that maybe you're going to do something where you have to 
you're going to have to fly over people. That set that opens up a whole new can of worms, and you have to know there's like different categories depending on the size of your drone. Uh, you know, 15 to 20 people that don't work for you constitutes a, a group of people. And so if there's at least 15 people there, so it's just all of these different rules and approvals and, and you, you know, just a lot of stuff. So um, in case you guys were thinking of getting your drone pilot's license, just know that it doesn't have a very much uh, you don't have to have a whole lot of knowledge of, you know, how to get a drone to zip around because it has nothing to do with that, but it has to do with safety, Ma mainly almost, you know, it's almost 100% safety, how to, how to fly your drone safely without running into another drone, running into an airplane, running into a building, you know, it's all of that type of stuff. And so, um, so anyway, I am on my way. So now that I, I've kind of got the general knowledge uh, because of this course, uh, basically now I just need to go in depth and start memorizing, you know, the different weights and the different categories and the different circumstances. And then uh, those maps, there's several questions where they basically just lay down one of those pilot aeronautic looking maps that have like airports on them and, uh, you know, topography and, and altitudes and, you know, what radio system they have at that airport, what size of an airport, what the altitude of the airport is, um, and, and just so when you see those maps there's all these little arrows and numbers and letters and colors and dash lines and shaded areas and you basically have to know what all of those lines mean and uh, so uh, a lot of memorizing. And so I need to, I've um, uh, got to move on and uh, do some studying. Hopefully I can get that done pretty quick because uh, I don't want to get too far away from having taken the class. And then also, uh, you know, I need to get me a Pro 3 and get it opened and start uh, messing around with it before it goes, you know, it gets old and they come out with a new one. So again, so there, that's uh, uh, part of the reason I didn't have an episode a week ago, uh, just uh, trying to work on that drone stuff. And then um, this last weekend, uh, I was, so that was like two weeks ago. So then this week or last week, I didn't get an episode because I was trying to cram everything in to get ready to leave for the weekend uh, because I knew I was going to be gone all weekend uh, and the different jobs and things that I do, I have to try to get. Uh, it makes vacation a little more fun if I can get as much stuff as possible out of the way uh, before I leave. And so uh, it was my and my wife's 24th wedding anniversary this last weekend on July 24th. And so we were married right here in Enid, Oklahoma, uh, 24 years ago on Sunday. So we left Enid and went over to Tulsa uh, to celebrate our anniversary. We've got a couple of different places we like to celebrate. We'll either go to Kansas City, Missouri, uh, Tulsa, or Oklahoma City. And uh, we kind of flip-flop around. Hadn't been to Tulsa in a while. Seems like we keep going to Oklahoma City. And so uh, this year my wife booked a hotel in downtown Tulsa and we headed over to Tulsa to celebrate um, 24 years. Uh, if you're young out there or if you are single and uh, you're thinking about getting married or you're you know engaged and getting ready to get married, um, I don't really have any big secrets to, uh, you know, making a marriage last 24 years, but uh, I can tell you one thing that for my wife and I, it is definitely not communication. We uh, do not communicate really well, and a lot of times we spring things on each other, you know, either thinking we've told each other or we haven't, but... Um, I think uh, pretty much the number one factor that uh, keeps us together and makes us so happy is we have a really great trust factor and we have ever since we we were dating uh, where you know she once wanted to take off on a weekend with her girlfriends for three days or or even after we were married wanted to run off to Las Vegas for a week 
um, you know, she would spring it on me almost last minute and I'd say, okay. And uh, she would head off and, you know, it wasn't like I was checking up. You know, we, I think we just have so much trust that we allow each other to do our own thing. But then, you know, then like this last weekend or when we do things with our girls, you know, it's family. But when it's just her and I, she has the ability to go do uh, hang out with her girlfriends, you know, go drink wine and stay out till two. And, uh, you know, I sit here working and watching TV. Or if I want to, you know, hop in a vehicle and go up to Nebraska with one of my buddies and, and watch a total eclipse of the sun on a weekend or during the week, we, we go do that. And so um, without, you know, really worrying. So I think, I think our uh, relationship is based more on uh, the trust factor and just uh, giving each other uh, a lot of space and a lot of freedom and not so much the communication. So uh, we could definitely be a lot better at that. Maybe one of these days uh, we will get better at that. So uh, so we headed over to Tulsa on Friday, spent the night Friday, Saturday, did a lot of eating out, uh, some shopping, uh, kind of interesting. Uh, ended up, we were at a hotel and it ended up there was a wedding um, this last weekend and pretty much the entire wedding party was staying at that hotel and we met a lot of the wedding party down in the bar and a lot of them, it was a mix of uh, a lot of them being from uh, Stillwater, Norman, which is OU, OSU, and Woodward and Enid. And so um, even though we didn't know anybody out of the group, every time we talked about something or mentioned names, we were, everybody was like, oh yeah, I know them, or I've heard of them, or, uh, and then there was one couple there that had two daughters that both danced, and uh, they found out that, you know, we had, that I was an OSU fan and went to OSU, and that we had two daughters, and neither one of them went to OSU, one went to Arkansas, one went to Norman, and uh, so I rarely, uh, ever, if ever right now, get to see any OSU games, because, um, uh, I'm always at Arkansas and OU games. So they were a little, They uh, the husband was a little uh, worried about that because he didn't want to lose his OSU uh, team, you know, but I said, you know, it only lasts for so long and then you can go back. But uh, so anyway, so we are gearing up. So the girl's uh, oldest daughter has run off to uh, OU Palm Camp already in Alabama and come back. Youngest daughter will be heading off to Arkansas Palm Camp camp in Arkansas here in about a week and then gosh in just a month or two we will uh, start the football season and we will literally be in Fayetteville one weekend, Norman the next, Fayetteville the next and just flip back and forth every weekend uh, which is basically going to terminate uh, me getting anything done on the weekends here uh, all the way through football season but uh, this will be our second year of doing that last year it was a blast uh, getting to see all the teams this year uh, we could see arkansas alabama and uh, some other great games ou texas and uh, so it's going to be a good year hopefully both teams do really well so fun stuff um trying to think if there was anything uh, uh drink wise uh, i don't I'm not a big, huge drinker. Uh, I never drink for um, relaxation like at home. I, I very, very, very rarely ever drink at home, but uh, every now and then, especially for uh, football weekends and anniversaries, um, I will have some drinks. And my drink of choice is uh, vodka because it's a clear liquid. And I like the fact that I don't have to mix it with soda pop because I do not drink Soda Pop gave that up uh, probably, uh, I don't know, 24, over 24 years ago, because I've been married 24 years. So um, so I drink a lot of vodka cranberry. Cranberry juice uh, is pretty healthy for you. And so what I learned this weekend was um, I had quite a few cranberry vodka cranberries on both nights and um, did not... Um, wake up with a hangover either morning and no headaches and I think it was a fact that I drank a ton of water so you know basically 
every time I would, you know, take two drinks of my alcoholic drink, I would chug a big, uh, a big gulp of water and was drinking, you know, it didn't keep me, you know, from getting buzzed, but I think what it did was kept me hydrated. And I think the more hydrated you stay, um, the better off you're going to be the next morning uh, as far as dealing with a headache or a hangover. So there's a little bit of advice for you from one of the old guys. Uh, don't forget I am. Uh, so I, I just I passed the 59 and a half mark. So less than six months I will be turning 60 years old, which uh, that's just shocking. It's just so, so shocking. So uh, one of the restaurants that we went to this weekend, they had a drink can't remember what they called it, but it was uh, it was strawberry, like strawberry syrup and jalapenos, and then it had a suggested liquor, and I can't remember what it was, but it may have been like a whiskey or something. And so I asked the gal, you know, what would that taste like with vodka? And she said, Oh, I don't know, that might be good. So I got one of those. It was so vodka, strawberry syrup, or strawberry something, and then and literally jalapenos. And uh, boy, those babies were spicy. I can't say that it was uh, one of my favorite drinks. Um, it was a little too hot for Denise, so I went ahead and took hers. And so I ended up drinking two of those. But um, I think it would have been good just, um, just sticking with uh, the vodka, strawberry, whatever it was, and then maybe a splash of lime or something instead of the uh, jalapeno. Now, I love jalapenos, so, uh, but I'm more of a, I want to eat the jalapenos, not drink the jalapenos kind of guy. So uh, that was interesting. And uh, then on, let's see, we got to Tulsa on Friday, hung out, went out to dinner, um, hit the bar, on Friday and then we got up early and went to a diner on Saturday and this diner is famous for their huge and I'm holding up my hands their huge cinnamon rolls so basically and it's called the the Ted and it used to be called the Ted as big as your head but I think another restaurant somewhere has the Jed as big as your head but literally the cinnamon roll is as big as your head and it's just caked in the icing, but the icing is made with um, not sugar, but um, what am I trying to think of? Um, cream cheese, I think, cream cheese. So it's, um, you know, it's, it was, it's thick, so I have to scrape a lot of it off. Um, but it's not super sweet, so you don't go into a sugar coma. And I don't eat, I mean, it is so big that basically what I do is I, I cut a path in the cinnamon roll to the middle, and then I eat about the middle three or four rings and then leave the, the outside three rings, and uh, that's about all I can eat. But uh, did that, and then we were headed back to the hotel, and my wife had mentioned something about... Um, Top Gun Maverick uh, showing at 10 in the morning and tickets were only like seven bucks. And so we talked about going, but by the time we walked to the hotel, it was like 9.30 something. And she goes, oh, I guess we're not going to make the 10 o'clock movie. And I said, oh, why? And she said, well, because it's we don't have enough time. And I was like, oh, wow, I hadn't realized what the time had gotten to. She goes, but um, unless we hopped in the car right now. And I said, well, let's go. So we hopped in the car and we drove uh, across Tulsa to the movie theater and uh, I got to see finally. So I started figuring and I think the last movie, so so I think the last movie I saw was um, uh, da, 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 Ford versus Ferrari at the end of 2019. So it has literally been, let's see, 20, 21, 22, almost three years, probably two and a half to three years since I've actually been in a movie theater. Now I know uh, part of that was uh, COVID in 2020, but also we live in a town of 50,000 people that uh, we no longer have a movie theater. So even if I'd wanted to go to the movies here in Enid, I 
couldn't because our movie theater has closed down and they haven't replaced, nobody's come in and replaced it. So, so basically I live in a town that's at least, uh, I think the closest movie theater would be a small one that's kind of an independent that maybe only has like one or two movies at a time probably 45 minutes away and then if you want to see you know kind of blockbuster and have a choice of movies you're talking at least like an hour and 15 minutes away or an hour and 30 minutes away so anyway so I have not been to a movie uh, uh, since 2019 and everybody's been talking about Top Gun Maverick and so I thought you know let's uh, let's go see now one so on my list right now it was Top Gun Maverick the last Jurassic Park, and then the Elvis movie. And we thought about trying to make all three movies this weekend, or at least two of them, and um, probably the only chance we had to have done that, had we should have just gone to the a movie immediately after Top Gun Maverick and just spent basically five hours in the movie theater, but um, we headed back to the hotel and then then you get busy and other things are going on and so we never did make it back to the movie theater so I only saw one movie um, this weekend but uh, wow let me tell you if you uh, if you have seen Top Gun Maverick uh, you're probably with about 99.9% .9 of the people that thought it was great if you have not seen Top Gun Maverick uh, you know not being a movie critic but uh, I would tell you especially well I would tell you to go see Top Gun Maverick uh, it's probably it's the movie you need to see this summer don't I mean even if you want to see the other ones uh, see those after Maverick you've got to see Top Gun Maverick for me it was really weird um, I hadn't really thought much about it everybody just said it was such a good movie and I knew, you know, it was probably going to have some great, um, you know, dog fighting and fighter pilot and uh, jet scenes. Well, uh, I think that's really cool because I got to fly with the Thunderbirds. And so, you know, I know what it feels like to, you know, take off and then shoot straight up, you know, into the sky and you're pulling, you know, three, four, five G's going up. And then, you know, when you're banking around, uh, you know, the pilot uh, gets you over nine G's. And so we did 9.3 G's. And, you know, you feel like they, the, the description is you feel like you have an elephant sitting on your chest, which is exactly what it is. You, your chest is being crushed. Your, your head is pinned to the back of your seat. You cannot move your arms. You, you, you literally just cannot move. You are totally stuck to your seat and uh, they have to teach you these breathing exercises because uh, some people forget to breathe and your chest isn't going in and out because it's being so compressed that you have to force the air in and out of your chest and otherwise you pass out. So a lot of people will black out when they when you pull uh, nine G's if you don't know how to breathe. And so and one part of the breathing is not only are you breathing, forcing air into your lungs so you don't pass out, but you're at the same time you are squeezing your thigh muscles and your legs, forcing the blood from your legs up into your body and you want the blood up into your head. Otherwise, uh, the force of that will drain the blood out of your head and another reason that you will black out and so um, you know a lot of people do black out now I was lucky that um, when we did 9.3 G's it was like really quick I mean you know he zipped around and you know we got to 9.3 pretty quick and as soon as we hit it you know he let off and didn't like try to sustain it and so uh, I didn't even come close to blacking out I, I never even you know, but I had been practicing, um, you know, so, uh, so flying in those jets is, is so much harder than people even realize. You, you think it maybe like it's like a video game where you're, you know, you're just sitting in a comfortable seat, but man, those guys, they're having to pull maneuvers where they're upside down or, <clears throat> you know, in a dogfight with another jet being fired at or they've got to be firing at somebody and they're doing these maneuvers where at any moment they could black out because of the G's um, and so they do have and I had on the one of the suits they do have suits that are they have these special pockets in the suit especially in the legs and 
when the plane starts to pull G's, it sends a signal to the suit and the suit inflates and those, those pockets inflate and they squeeze your legs and that helps squeeze the blood to your head so you don't pass out. But you still got to learn to automatically do those breathing exercises and also squeeze yourself so when you're doing those maneuvers, you don't pass out. Um, and so, uh, and it, you know, it takes a lot of, you know, a lot of exertion. So it's, it's almost like you're, you know, playing a sport or working out when you're in a long flight or something like that. So, uh, so I have a super duper appreciation for uh, what the pilots go through because of doing that. So I knew that watching Top Gun was going to be cool in that aspect. And then, you know, seeing the first one, which I was a fan of, I wasn't, you know, I didn't think it was like the greatest movie ever, but I thought it was just a good movie. And definitely not for the love story, but for the, you know, the shots of the, the planes and the dogfights and the things like that. So I knew uh, Top Gun Maverick was going to, you know, have its own really cool, and but up to date, probably even better scenes of doing these dogfights and stuff. But what I didn't anticipate was the nostalgia. Um, I mean, it just, it got me in the feel, feels almost as soon as the movie started because what, what I realized is I'm basically Tom Cruise's age. And so when I saw Top Gun, the first one, I was Tom Cruise's age. And so I could see myself as, hey, you know, that's me, I'm that age, I could be that pilot, I could be any one of those pilots. And then watching Top Gun Maverick, all of a sudden I'm like, hey, that's me. I'm older now and my f a lot of my friends have passed away and some of my friends are sick and dying of things and, and you know, I'm not as young as I used to be and it just, I don't know, it was just so weird. I was like, it was like, and it wasn't even the scenes where you know how they they have different scenes and music that trigger people to kind of get the the teary eye and man it wasn't even those scenes that were getting to me it was just the just the scene just the other scenes i mean literally when the movie started i was like wow I, you know this is hitting me pretty hard because this is because you know just having gone through my mom passing away and my father-in-law passing away and um, you know, basically anybody that uh, we know that's in their 80s, you know, is passing away. And now we are the older generation. So our kids and, and everything and grand, I don't have any grandkids, but my friends as grandkids, you know, now we're the, now we're the grandparents, which I, boy, you know, I don't think I'm ready for that. But this movie, um, Top Gun Maverick, so if you're my, so I'm 59 and a half, if you're anywhere around that age and you saw Top Gun, and, and Top Gun Maverick is a huge homage to Top Gun. You know, it, it talks about where everybody has kind of ended up and, and uh, it's got Iceman in it. And if you know his story, um, if you don't know his story, look up his story. And um, anyway, it just it just seems like it was tying up loose ends from Top Gun, but the loose ends that it was tying up were really related to loose ends that everybody our age is starting to have to you know tie up. You know, losing friends and and not getting to do things that we you know at the time of Top Gun 1 would have been able to do and now that we're older there's some things that we can't do so anyway um, I highly recommend uh, Top Gun Maverick as far as just pure entertainment but uh, boy nostalgia it just uh, boy it got you thinking wow we are getting old we are getting older so uh, I think that's what hit me so hard um, so, so we did that over the weekend and uh, cruised back. And so now I am back trying to catch up on podcast episodes, blog stuff, and uh, have been spending a lot of time, uh, again, because of the last episode, you know, just trying to find that hook and get some ideas for the book, uh, Banana Seat Squad. So 
as soon as I get a few more details, I promise I'm going to get that thing is going to start flowing and uh, hopefully it won't be long. And, uh, you know, I'll have that thing written. I've still got my surfboard uh, right in front of me right now screaming at me because it has nothing on it. But I did order my paint pens. I got those in. And so I am still uh, trying to uh, think of some ideas of what am I going to do. But it's important what I do on the first one because that's going to kind of be the shag signature paint style or look. And I want to establish, you know, my style or my look with the first design and uh, so then I can build from there. So uh, still working on the ideas for that. Um, haven't quite um, decided what I'm going to do there. So, uh, so a lot of my uh, projects are still in the work. Another project um, have been talked to my sister and I think I'm probably going to take over the 67 Thunderbird, my mom's 67 Thunderbird, but uh, it has been sitting in a garage for we don't even know how long. Um, it could be 10, it could be 20 years. I can't I can't even remember the last time she drove it. So it's uh, basically a barn find. Uh, tires are flat. It hasn't been started. You know, I'm going to go through the gas tank, new battery, new tires, um, all new rubber, you know, in the engine. Uh, so it's sitting in a garage at my mom's old house. Now I'm going to have to haul it over here to my house so I can, you know, work on it, have it in the driveway. So getting ready to do that, hire a, um, a towing company to come snag it. And then uh, Todd and I will probably start working on that. And then one of these days we will have the old T-Bird up and running. And then when we do some of these uh, drags where we go out on Van Buren and drag the strip, they you know, have a major one every year. And then we've got some smaller ones that uh, they're doing about every other month. And so I want to get the Thunderbird primed and ready for those so I can take it out. Uh, nobody in town uh, drags the strip during the drag nights in a Thunderbird. So I should be the only one out there in the Thunderbird. So that's just another one of the uh, many projects going on here under Shaggy Duck Studio. And then um, talk to an old friend today. So uh, interestingly enough, if you guys listened to um, the last episode where I talked about what um, Banana Seat Squad is based on, you know, these five friends from Enid, Oklahoma that all lived on West Broadway, you know, which I was one of. I talk about Brendan who lived in the mansion. Well, he actually called me today. And so I've got some news there. He, um, his, so it ended up, and I don't, I, I think I've mentioned this, ended up that his brother uh, was Michael Hedges. And Michael Hedges, after spending a year uh, in California, you know, was in Enid, but then his dad took a sabbatical to California for a year. And then when he came back, he had this whole new appreciation of music uh, because of Joni Mitchell and um, Crosby, Stills, Nash and & Young and all those guys. And so, um, so Michael Hedges uh, started playing guitar and, and experimenting with guitar and came up with a whole new way of playing guitar. And, uh, became a guitar virtuoso and then eventually graduated work but ended up back in California and became friends with Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young and those guys and um, and then unfortunately uh, you know died in a car wreck on one of the winding uh, California roads and unfortunately also just before he he, he was nominated uh, for a Grammy in New Age music and actually won the Grammy that year that uh, he passed away. So he was unable to uh, be there for his Grammy, but um, huge following, um, huge influence on uh, guitar players. So if you, if you have no idea who I'm talking about, um, go to YouTube and type in Michael Hedges or Michael Hedges Enid and watch a few of his videos. Um, some of them, there might be some songs that, you know, you're like, eh, I don't know, but uh, listen to several and uh, you'll kind of start picking up on his style. He's basically one of those guys that could play the guitar, you know, with one, one set of fingers sounded like one guitar player, the other 
finger sounded like a second guitar player. He could thump at the same time, which sounded like somebody uh, playing a drum. Uh, and he, he could almost sound like an entire band all by himself, just with one guitar. And uh, just did a lot of uh, just really interesting things with a guitar. And so uh, was classified by a lot of people as the greatest. I mean, people have said greatest guitarist ever uh, from right here in Enid, Oklahoma. So if you uh, have never heard of Michael Hedges, the reason I'm telling you this is, and then the reason Brendan called is, so it just, just by pure luck, so Brendan, who is Michael's brother and Michael's actual son, Misha, they got together and they felt like it was time to do a documentary on the life of Michael Hedges. And so they are currently crowdfunding not really crowdfunding, they're just trying to raise funds and putting a documentary together about Michael Hedges' life, and they've already started filming. They went to New York last uh, week and did some filming up there, and then, so Brendan was calling to let me know that they're coming to Enid in September, and they're going to be scouting out um, some locations and, and wanting some information on drone flying so they can get some scenes set up because the movie or the documentary will start um, basically in Enid, Oklahoma and have, you know, some scenes of, of Michael, you know, where he grew up and the schools that he went to and things like that. And so he was talking to me about that. And then it just so happens also there's a, a guy that um, was a really big Michael Hedges fan. I think he was in the tech industry and sold his tech company and became really wealthy and decided, uh, since he didn't have anything better to do, he didn't really have a job anymore, that he was going to write a book. And he decided, since there was not uh, an autobiography, not an autobiography, but a, a book about Michael Hedges out there, he was going to write it. And so it just so happened um, he decided to write. So he's come to Enid before, and so I've met with him. Um, been interviewed uh, because I hung out, you know, with the Hedges and, and was around when Michael, you know, was growing up and all that stuff. And so uh, so he and I have become kind of friends um, and he's going to be coming back also in September to uh, do some stuff, you know, get some more information um, for the book. But then Brendan will be here to get information for the documentary. So if you do know who Michael Hedges is and you're a big fan, uh, be aware that within, you know, I wouldn't say a year, but maybe within two years, there will be a Michael Hedges documentary and a Michael Hedges book out on the market. And they're hoping that the documentary, I think, uh, could possibly turn into a movie or get picked up by, you know, Netflix or, you know, somebody big like that. So we'll see how that goes. And so Brendan went to school, um, left Enid, uh, when we were in junior high and ended up, you know, finishing high school in Chico, California, but uh, went on to take classes at in California for directing and movie making, and so, uh, so they they you know they have all the you know equipment and knowledge of actually putting a film together, um, but at this time, you know, they're not putting a film together, but they're just uh, starting with a documentary. So I'm going to have a lot of insights into the documentary and the book. I will keep you guys updated on that. Um, I will probably uh, have a quote or something in the book when it comes out. Uh, I'm not sure if I will be, probably won't be mentioned in the documentary, but uh, if you do, when the documentary does come out, uh, there will be actual scenes of Enid, Oklahoma and West Broadway and the Hedges Mansion. And so you'll get to see, you know, what the street that I grew up on and the house that we played in uh, and all that also centers around um, the Banana Seat Squad. So uh, kind of cool how all of that is tying in together. And uh, so, so this whole week, you know, so now, you know, I'm thinking nostalgia with the whole Top Gun Maverick and then Brendan Calls and they're doing the documentary and all this is, uh, you know, about when we were younger and growing up and uh, just kind of cool how right now everything's kind of tying 
in together. So, uh, so look forward. Uh, I look forward to uh, keeping guys updated on all of that stuff. And again, uh, go to YouTube and uh, definitely check out uh, Michael Hedges. You guys will uh, probably be amazed. He did uh, one concert here in Enid uh, to raise money for um, a place here in Enid, and uh, that was the last time, I can't remember the exact year, but uh, that was the last time I got to see Michael. And during that period, Brendan had kind of dropped off the edge of the world, and so I had no idea what Brendan was up to. You know, there were rumors he was off in a ranch somewhere writing a book and um, so it was it was pretty cool getting to see Michael um, perform and he's uh, he's an interesting character not your typical rock and roller or pop artist um, you definitely try to find some YouTube videos of him performing not just don't go to like Spotify and just listen to his music uh, you'll want to see him. You'll want to see how he dressed, what he looked like, what he does on stage while he's playing. Uh, it's really interesting. So uh, check that out. So uh, that's kind of what has been going on around here at Shaggy Duck Studio. That's why I had not gotten an episode out. And I do have another episode ready to go. It, uh, it, uh, it's about... Um, coming-of-age movies, and at one point way back in the day, I had the uh, market cornered on that as far as Google, so I think that'll probably be the next episode I'm going to talk about uh, because that's kind of what uh, Banana Seat Squad will be like, so I will uh, go into depth a little more on that coming up, and I might even be able to squeeze that episode in this week to make up for you know missing at least two weeks of episodes uh, earlier in the month so hope you guys are doing good out there uh, please email me at shags at shaggyduck.com i'd love to hear from you guys i know uh, i see the numbers i know you guys are listening to the podcast so uh, hit me up tell me Maybe an episode that you liked, some ideas that you liked, some ideas that you would uh, like to hear about. Or if you, again, I would love to listen to your podcast or your blogs uh, or read your blogs. So you guys um, uh, send me an email and let me know what you guys are up to. And I would love to hear from you guys. Don't forget, you can go to youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV and see this episode on YouTube. I'm waving at you right now. I've got my um, Boo. Oh, how appropriate. I got my Boo Berry um, t shirt on with uh, Boo Berry on the front. And uh, boy, people are already starting to talk about Halloween. So we are not that far off from Halloween coming up, so look forward to that. But uh, again, really appreciate you guys. Uh, the numbers have been really uh, starting to increase on the number of people listening to the podcast. I still wish I had more of a direction or more of, I, I wanna do episodes that help you guys, you know, um, explain something to you or tell you something or inform you and not just, you know, yabba yabba dabba do about what I'm up to. Although like this last weekend, you know, I can kind of give you a review of Maverick and and some different things, so so that's that's been okay. But um, give me your ideas. Let me know what you guys want to hear. I know I am starved for great podcasts. I want to you know find some podcasts that are interesting, um, but you know where I I kind of either learn something or I'm really interested in what the person's talking about, and uh, those uh, can be few and far between. So, uh, but I want to listen to you. I want to try your guys. You know, I don't. I don't want you to send me a list of five other people. I want. I want to hear if you guys are doing any podcasting or anything like that. So, anyway, I'm going to sign off for this episode of a Shaggy Duck Life. Again, I appreciate you guys so much. Um, let me know where you're listening from. At least uh, I'm stuck here in the middle of great America. If you're listening from another country, I would definitely love to hear what uh, part of the world you guys are listening from. If you're listening from another part of the United States, would also love to hear. Let me know what your weather's been like. Again, we've got this heat dome over Oklahoma right now where uh, we are setting some record high temperatures. So let me know what's going on in your neck of the woods and I will uh, see you guys later. See ya!